But going back to the acute versus chronic, I showed you the diagram of what an acute disease looks like, and that was very much a simplistic diagram. They can vary, as I show here on this slide. So sometimes they are very short and not very intense. As you can see, the energy above the line and below the line, the height of the red uh, part of the diagram, the stress phase, and the depth of the bluish purplish part of the regeneration isn't all that deep, isn't all that high. So that's because the intensity isn't very big because the trauma itself wasn't a very big trauma. We're relatively a, a relatively able to easily process that and move on through. On the bottom diagram here, the bottom kind of graph here, the height of the orange section and the depth of the bluish purplish session is much greater. That's because the intensity is greater. So we're going to experience more of the uh, stress, higher level of um, greater intensity of the stress and of the symptoms of that stress in the bottom diagram and equally the same, it'll be reflected in the intensity of the symptoms of our regeneration, the healing process. And the sorts of things, I said I'd mention what sorts of symptoms we could experience. In the stress phase, it tends to be things like cold extremities, cold hands and feet, because the blood is being directed away from these and towards our vital organs, towards our heart and our lungs, our muscles, the things that are going to help us with that fight or flight response, that survival response. And I'm going to go into that in more depth in another uh, presentation, in another um in another talk. So I, I'll link it in with this one once I've uploaded it to YouTube. In the regeneration, that's where we tend to experience the things that we think of as the symptoms of dis-ease. But from a meta-consciousness perspective, we understand that they're actually the symptoms of healing. They are our body releasing, processing and releasing all of the stress, all of the tension, all of the changes, the survival changes it went through during the first phase, the stress phase. And that can look like the symptoms of dis-ease. That's what we would call them from a, tradi uh, from a mainstream medicine perspective. And they can be deeply uncomfortable, particularly if, as in the bottom diagram here, diagram here, they are intense, but it could be things like aches and pains, those flu-like symptoms, or it could be um, the nausea that I mentioned, or uh, it can be inflammation, swelling, um, redness, heat, fever, skin conditions can flare up, or they look like they're flaring up, and flaring up maybe would be more a uh, mainstream medicine way of describing it but basically what our body is doing here is healing if you think about any time you cut yourself i have noticed over the years that often on the first day when the, the cut happens it's there and it's annoying but it's not fully developed maybe uh, yet so it hasn't fully swollen it, it, depending on uh, how deep and severe the cut is but often it's the next day where I really feel it. That's when it seems to catch on everything because it has swollen. And maybe if it's the sides of a cut and they've swollen, then it's looking a little bit more angry and open and can be seeping a little bit. And it's red and it's hot. That's our body trying to heal. Similarly, if you think of something like eczema, it's red and it's hot and it's itchy when it's healing, not when we're in stress. And if you experience eczema or something of that kind, skin conditions, notice if you have, if it comes and goes, just notice, maybe keep a diary 
of what's been going on up to when you experience the symptoms most severely, and then what's happening after that. What happens, like when you're feeling stressed and pressured, maybe very busy at work, is the eczema happening then? Or does it happen just after? And if it is happening then, notice when is it at its worst? Is it at its worst maybe in the evening when you come home from work and you're able to leave work behind to a degree? So you have that little bit of a shift maybe, takes you into four just enough, but not fully. And that's where we come on to talking about the chronic conditions. But basically, just to finish this off, to say that when we see redness, inflammation, feel heat, uh, feel aches and pains in our body, have the colds, uh, like the snot part of the cold, the cough, the phlegm, uh, equally with um, allergies, hay fever, that is actually the body trying to heal. And if it's an acute condition, like a cold, like the flu, and we are able to take the time and the space to rest and to allow our body to go through that. Then we come out the other side, as in these diagrams, we reach part number seven here and we go back to our normal day night rhythm. However, if at point four, we only have a partial shift so we haven't fully released the whole of the trauma and we're still to some extent holding that trapped ball of emotion, that energy of the trauma to some extent is still being held within our body. It's like ammunition that can be reactivated and can explode at some point in the future. Then what we experience is chronic ill health. And that can look a little bit like this. 